early next year, January, we'll be publishing a, a monograph on Africa 2050, which is really looking at the next 40 years on the continent. Um, and the picture is, is, is a very positive picture. Uh, last week, uh, yes, it was last week or the week before that, the World Bank, uh, which is not renowned for its optimism on, on Africa, uh, said um, that Africa is poised for a similar takeoff to India and China some decades ago. Believe me, that is true. It's not just hype. I'm always struck with that background about how negative South Africans are, and South Africa particularly is, about this country. And how unfairly uh, we portray ourselves, and we are portrayed by the international media. It's also fed by the lack of uh, comparable crime information in most of the developing world. Some years ago, we did a global study for the United Nations on, uh, on crime statistics and crime trends in Africa. Uh, sorry, in the world. And um, only South Africa has got accurate crime statistics in Africa. The remaining statistics, which are mostly about murder and a little bit from Interpol, is really very spotted. And we are repeatedly told that uh, South Africa is the crime capital of the world and other fairy tales, because they are nothing more than fairy tales. We have for sure a serious problem in this country, particularly with violent crime. But when we place it in context with the situation in other developing societies, not trying to compare ourselves with London or Washington, Washington is an interesting example, by the way, um, then uh, the reality is that crime in a number of key African cities is significantly higher than that in, uh, in the mo most violent South African city. I say again, the most important difference is that we have accurate crime statistics. And we tend to compare ourselves with Europe and North America. Now, you can argue about the uh, a little bit of crime manipulation of statistics here and there, and uh, we've done a lot of work on that, but that reality remains true. And then there's the expectations of what will come out of Africa. It's a very Western approach that we in South Africa have, a very developed world approach. Um, you know, if you compare uh, how India is perceived, India, which has got worse problems than most of Africa, but how is India perceived in the world? It is perceived as a rising giant. It is perceived for its opportunity. Africa, largely influenced by the Western media, is perceived to be black Africa, a problem, hunger, poverty, disease. The reality is very different. If you compare how Africa is perceived in the West versus the Eastern media, in the East, Africa is perceived as a continent of rising opportunity and investment, which is the reality. We, we are suckers for what London writes, what Paris writes, what Washington writes about Africa. And the final factor, of course, is the, 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 the challenges that we have of poor leadership in this country, something that I think we're all quite aware of. Our leaders in, in society, in every sector, need to lead by example if we are to move forward. It depends on what cars they need to take care of, on what cars they buy with public money, where they stay on public expense, the involvement of their friends and family in business, and their personal conduct in every aspect of life. If we don't deal with those issues, then um, we cannot fix the challenge of crime and corruption in this country. And I say again, it's a serious challenge. Um, and on the one side, crime is largely a local problem, an urban problem, because that's where most people are. You can say it's largely a male problem as well, if you, uh, if you want to add that dimension to it. It's also largely true, particularly violent crime. Um, and it, one can therefore make the argument that therefore requires local solutions. And there are clear limits to the centralized approach to policing that South Africa has adopted. It can't also, crime in South Africa, be solved by tinkering with technological solutions only. Preventing and combating crime requires a whole of government and a whole of society approach. It's a whole of government problem because if we don't fix our schooling, our local government, our street lighting, our public transport, housing, social welfare, we won't be able to deal with, with crime. It's not a criminal justice problem only. It's a whole of society problem because we're all in this together. This is not only a matter that affects South African citizens, but also our uh, South African urban citizens, but also rural citizens, the lack of uh, uh, rural security, of safety across the whole country. It is also a regional challenge. If you look at the Gini coefficient 
for Southern Africa and projections into the future, then this is the most unequal region in the world. Countries like Namibia and South Africa have remarkably high Gini coefficient levels. You know, if you have a GDP per capita uh, in South Africa, which is 30 times higher than that in the DRC, you must ask yourself, what is that going to do in the region? If we don't deal with the political abuse and authoritarianism in Swaziland, uh, the oppression in Zimbabwe, uh, the problems will wash over to South Africa. So this is eventually also not only a whole of government, a whole of society, but also a regional challenge that we need to face. To face. A thematic question that frames the background uh, of this conference is whether we should have a coherent strategy for crime prevention in South Africa, a national policy, a national plan, a white paper, a framework. We had the National Crime Prevention Strategy that was adopted in 1996, but for various reasons the strategy was largely not implemented, and it's raised doubts about whether or not we should have such a strategy. Some argue that crime is complex and dynamic social, that it is a complex and dynamic social challenge that cannot be adequate adequately presented by a single comprehensive strategy and that it's not feasible to develop one. Proponents on the, other, on the other hand argue that without a strategy that guides a wide range of role players that are not typically seen as having a clear role to play, for example local government, education, academic institutions, crime prevention remains the sole preserve of the police and the supporting criminal justice departments. This therefore results in an, in an inadequately quickly state-driven response to the problem.